This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Dang, that was a good scene. That was a good scene. I'd expected the rain to linger, but it vanishes with surprising swiftness. Before I know it, the sound of raindrops against the window disappears, and the cicadas emerge from their hiding places to join in a vigorous chorus of chirps. The sunlight streaming in from the window is so bright, it almost feels like the dismal little scene in Michiru's room was all an illusion. As the air grows thick with humidity, I rest my hands on the damp desk and settle my breathing. The world previously dark as night has at least regained its luster. I can only hope the change in weather re uh, rallies Mitra's spirits a little. Alright then. With those words, I push myself up off the desk. At times, it can be easiest to postpone the planning phase until after you've started moving. My head feels strangely heavy on my shoulders. My thoughts are sluggish and vague. And unless I verbally spur myself on, I don't think I'll manage to take even the first step forward. Alright then, what next? I speak again trying to get into gear, but my wheels can't find any traction. Well, sometimes it doesn't come easy. Well, sometimes it doesn't come easy. I continue to speak in my thoughts aloud, but my strangely flat words evaporate into the muggy air. Seems like this technique isn't just going to work today. But fortunately, the deadlock's broken from the other side, I stand and quietly open the door. Mitru stands outside my room with a face full of regret and anxiety, eyes darting back and forth. She plays with the hem of her skirt. The girl clearly hasn't calmed down yet. Judging from those terribly bloodshot eyes, she was probably crying in her room until not too long ago. Mitru is just full of apologies lately. At this point, it's no longer clear what she's even sorry for. They're meaningless words. Filler for when she doesn't know what else to say. You don't need to apologize. Want to come in? I see. I'm not irresponsible enough to tell you it's not a problem, let alone don't worry about it. But right now, you're too upset to think. Maybe you should pet that cat for a while until you feel better. No, he's not in here. I saw him heading out of the school a little while ago. Mitra sets off down the hallway, presumably intending to head for the usual high ridge. But after only a few steps, she loses her balance and has to steady herself against the wall. Maybe you should get a little rest first. I mean, you weren't that mean. You, you were just like, I'm not in the mood right now. Michiru holds out her hand to show me a small plastic bag, full of biscuits in the shape of various animals. Yep. It's just like sweets for humans. The girl forces a strained, quavery smile onto her face. In combination with her swollen red eyes, the effect is downright pitiful. I see. By which you presumably mean, I just bought too many. So you can have one, but that's it! I'd appreciate it if she didn't. Either way, I'll come too. I can't leave you alone in this condition. Hmm, I think the term search and rescue operation is more appropriate. I decided to come alone entirely on my own. Nobody else played any role. Is that not enough for you? Mitra reaches down and grasps my hand. Since there's no particular reason to shake her off, I squeeze back with a moderate amount of force. <sighs> but what are you planning to do if someone sees us like this? Won't your Sundari reputation be ruined? Now you're going to make me into a stalker. You really are nothing but trouble, princess. <laughs> Looking around the area restlessly, Michiru calls out the cat's name again and again. Probably wasted effort. 
I think I'd be able to sense his presence if he was hiding around here. That's not how human senses work. I saw him running toward the road, so he probably left the premises for a while. Maybe he's still outside the campus? Won't forgive you? Give him a little food and he'll forget it ever happened. It's just a cat, you know. Hmm. You have a place in mind, right? No need to be so uneasy. After a slow walk along the seaside road, we finally approached the usual spot. Mitra is not in great shape. She had to squat down and catch her breath several times. But she's refused to take a longer break. She probably hasn't been eating. So she has no energy. Large puddles of water sit on the surface of the road, beautifully reflecting the, sky blue, the blue sky above. Apparently trying not to disturb their brilliance, Mitra carefully steps around them as she walks. Even as I'm watching the girl hop around like an unusually dejected rabbit, my mind is still somewhere else entirely. A certain unpleasant premonition has begun to take root inside me. At times like these, my animal instinct verse is vexingly accurate. <laughs> Michiru frantically searches places where a cat might be hiding, but there's no familiar meow to greet her. The still damp grass leaves her clothes slightly wet. Michiru, don't get too flustered even if he isn't here. Probably just hanging around somewhere else at for the moment. There's no cause for alarm. Only your room in here? That's more unusual than him going missing. We're dealing with a stray cat. Surely it has other haunts. He's not a stray cat anymore. <laughs> hmm. Look for him where? Again with the crazy talk. A light brown cat with spotted with white emerges from a nearby clump of bushes. Michiru heaves a heavy sigh, then crouches down and talks to it. Do we not get to see the other cat? That cat has much better sound effects, but still not the best. The stray cat seems to be primarily interested in the biscuits Michiru is holding, probably emerged after hearing the plastic bag rustling. He might have just wandered back into the dorm on his own by now. Let's get going. Mitru trudges along, clearly discouraged. The sun's just now straight overhead, ruthlessly bathing us in the midsummer heat. What's the point of speculating? It's completely natural for cats to wander off. He'll come back once he gets hungry. Uh -oh. Don't get caught up in what ifs. In the first place, all of a sudden, Mitru drops her plastic bag of biscuits onto the road. I pick it up and hold it back to her, but the girl shows no sign of reaching out to take it. What's wrong? Tired from the walk? I don't mind carrying you on my back if you want. Michiru slowly raises a finger to point far down the path. On the side of the asphalt roadway, there's a small black lump in, like a spot of spilled ink. Oh no. I can't say from this distance. I'll take a look, so you stay here. Understand? Don't move an inch. Oh no. That music means only one thing. Something real bad's about to happen. The black lump's lying about a hundred meters ahead. 
It must have tumbled along the road for a decent distance after the impact. There's a visible bloody trail leading to the small light. Oh no! 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 This is awful. Still breathing, but it's a matter of time. Oh, that's even worse! No! The black object before my eyes is without a doubt an unfortunate feline that was hit by a car. But I can't determine whether it's Mishiru's pet or simply a stray that bears a strong resemblance to it. No, if I take the time to observe it calmly, I should be able to tell. But for now, I put that off. I told you to wait, damn it! Why didn't you listen? Ignoring my words completely, the girl approaches on trembling legs. Mitru's expression instantly crumbles with despair. Her eyes are already full of tears. I briefly hesitate, uncertain how to explain the reality before us. The cat responds to Mitru's call with a feeble croak. It's unmistakably that familiar meow. <laughs> Calm down. Panicking isn't going to help anything. I'll take a look. I examine the cat where it lies limply on the road. There's bleeding it's ble there's bleeding from the mouth and ears, but the external wound doesn't appear to be that severe. When I feel gently around the stomach area, I can feel the broken bones and ruptured viscera on the other side. The animal suffered serious internal damage from the impact. Small bright red pools of blood have formed on the edge of the cat's eyes. When I try to pet his head, the animal blinks, sending them flowing down his face like tears. He's been avoiding me all this time, but this does wasn't exactly how I'd pictured our reconciliation. He won't make it if we leave him here like this. We need to get him to a vet, and soon. <laughs> Tell me if you see a car approaching, alright? I'll stop them. <laughs> hey, watch it! You're trying to get yourself killed?! As Mitru dashes out into the middle of the road, the driver screeches to a halt, then rolls down his window to shout angrily. I come running after him and put both his hands uh, both hands on the hood of his taxi. I'm sorry about my friend, but please hear us out. This is an emergency. Can you get us to a veterinarian quickly? We don't have time to argue, alright? In response to my forceful bluster, he, the apparently soft-hearted driver nods quietly. When I turn back, Mitru is already carrying the limp black cat in her arms. Get in, Mitru, and keep calm. I don't know. Let's focus on getting him to a veterinarian. That's the most we can do for... Meowmo, right now. <laughs> oh no... I don't want to CG for this moment. No! This is hitting me harder than Sachi's backstory is hitting me. Inside Mitra's arms, Meowmo draws ragged, shallow breaths, trembling slightly. Dang. A plus job on her voice actress, though. This isn't your fault. It was an accident. Apologizing isn't going to do anything. Pfft. Nightbot, excuse me. <laughs> he can post clip links, that's fine. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna time out. I don't forgot Nightbot's even here, I'm timing him out. <laughs> well, that, that ruined the mood a little bit. <sighs> Large teardrops tumble down Mitra's cheeks and fall onto Meowmo's face. The cat lying there like a tattered old carpet is slowly covered in a mixture of tears and blood. Mitru seizes the bag of treats from my hands, and then breaks one up and places a tiny piece on the tip of her index finger.
Miyamo tentatively sticks out his tongue and licks Michiru's finger several times. The fragment of biscuit on her finger quickly grows sticky and red with his blood. As a cat lover who has owned several pet cats in the past, this is hitting me hard. Distorting the truth would be easy enough, but what's the point? My lies can't dull her pain, and much less save the cat. I offer them a sincere answer. Hug him, Michiru. That's the only thing you can do right now. Hi, Lucia. You just joined at a really sad moment. <laughs> but welcome. Yamo begins to cough weakly, trying to spit out the saliva and blood pooling in his tiny mouth. But the light's gradually fading from his eyes. As Michiru strokes the cat, hair falls out in bloody clumps and sticks to the seat of the car. The driver glances tentatively back at us through the rearview mirror. Don't worry, I'll pay for your cleaning bill. I reach out and gently rest a hand on Miyamo's body. His convulsions don't seem to be getting any better. There's no longer any room for wishful thinking. It won't be long now. <laughs> With one final soft purr, Miyamo extends his forelegs straight out as if to pester his mother for milk. And then just like that, he quietly breathes his last. Why do you have to give us CGs like this? Why? I like CGs, but not like this. <sighs> Michiru must have felt the very instant the tiny life disappeared inside her arms. Trembling violently, she looks over at me with pleading eyes. I shake my head slowly, but she nevertheless presses her lips against the cat's blood-stained mouth and tries artificial respiration. It doesn't go well. In the end, she hangs her head and breaks into hysterical sobs. Some people would probably say, it's only a cat. Or maybe, how much can a relationship that only lasted a few weeks really mean? But there's no denying the fact that this cat was an irreplaceable friend to Michiru. A beloved companion was just taken from her in the most meaningless, arbitrary way possible, right before our eyes. There's not even anyone to blame. No story to explain it, to enable acceptance. Death abruptly wandered by and snatched him away for no reason at all. Sorry, but please change the destination to Mahama Academy. We don't have any need to visit the veterinarian anymore. When I inform the driver of the situation, Michiru objects in a choked voice. That's not possible anymore. You know it isn't. Except reality. I understand that you don't want to believe it, but there's nothing we can do. What use is there in talking about that? You're you, and she has nothing to do with this. We're getting out. Let me have the cat. I'll take care of it. I know. Look, just get out of the car, alright? This isn't the time to throw a tantrum. やっぱり名前なんてつけなきゃよかったんだよ。私と関係しなければよかったんだ。もうやだよ。こういうのやだよ。もうこれ以上悲しいことはやだよ。誰かと仲良くなったり、笑ったりしても結局最後には別れしか
man, the, the the makers of this game did a perfect job of on this scene with her dialogue, her reactions, and her voice actress. Oh my gosh. Best voice actress in the game. I grab Michiru by the wrist and forcibly yank her along. Shut up. Then embrace her forcefully. I hug Michiru's slender body against mine so strongly that it feels like I might break her. This is painful for me, too. At those words, Michiru buries her face against my chest and begins sobbing convulsively. Miyamo dying is a sad, terrible thing for both of us. But you need to stop drawing connections that aren't there. The cat's death had nothing to do with anything else. And you sure as hell weren't at fault. This was an accident. I've been through something very similar myself. I know how it feels alright. But there's no point in just breaking down. Do what you have to first. If you're going to cry, then do it afterward. <laughs> then think. Don't run away. I attempt to pay the cabbie, but he drives off without accepting a dime. Probably wanted to bid the quickest possible farewell to his eerie clients and their blood-stained cat corpse. The cab driver is the real MVP in this story. Also, I'm getting... <laughs> what I'm getting is that the, the person who made the game, or the people, or the team who made this game, is a huge fan of getting having people enter traffic accidents. First it was Sachi's parents, now it's Michiru's cat. And also, Amine was in a bus crash in her, in, uh, her past as well. That was mentioned at the beginning as well. <laughs> So that's like three characters that have motor-related accidents as part of their backstories or present stories. Hmm. Nichiru hugs the cat's body tightly, showing no intention of letting any go anytime soon. She seems to have accepted the reality of its death, but clearly has no idea of how to cope with it. If it's not a stuffed animal in your arms, you can't hold on to it forever. Let me take the cat. I won't treat him badly. After a long internal debate, Michiru f finally hands me the cat. Thanks to the summer heat, fluid has already begun to ooze out of his anus. The girl's clothes are soiled. Even so, she pets his head numerous times, clearly reluctant to part. I decide it's probably best to let her be alone for a while. After respectfully dealing with the cat's body, I return to my room and take a shower. The cat died. Yeah! No... No, duh. <laughs> How do we make a good story? Let's put them in car accidents. Well, it definitely seems to be an ongoing theme with this game. Wonder if I wonder if every girl's backstory has involves a motor accident of some kind. No spoilers. Do not tell me if I'm right or not. This is just something I'm wondering out loud. From an objective point of view, a stray cat was hit by a car. Nothing more, nothing less. That's still sad. The animal shelters, abandoned pets, and feral strays are disposed of in the tens of thousands every year. That's also sad. To the world at large, that death of that cat is essentially meaningless. But a precious fragment of Mitru's world was stolen away before her very eyes. From that perspective, we're clearly facing a gravely serious situation. Well, I know I normally stream for longer than this, but I think I'm going to have to end the stream there. Because that was a lot to take in, and yeah, well, that was, you know, it was good story. We, we learned some more stuff today, and there were some really good scenes, but wow, that was sad. I didn't cry, but I almost did, and yep, that, that hit me harder than Sachi's entire backstory, which is probably unusual, but there we go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I'll try to stream this again next weekend if I can. This is this is definitely getting very good. I'm really liking the story progression, and it's much less uncomfortable to stream this now. But, eh, it, this game is sad, and it's emotional. So, I was not expecting that today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and God bless.